Hello, everyone. We are live in Bali. Where are you, Heather? Thailand. Thailand and Squamish. Close to Vancouver, Canada. nobody knows where Squamish is. <laughs> uh, if, yeah, we're one, well, Heather and I are one day ahead because of the time zone difference and, and Amy is from the past, <laughs> the day before. Um, thank you guys for joining us for this awesome chat show. I love running chat shows because it's real conversations with real people experiencing real issues uh, and also real insights that we discover as we go through uh, things that sometimes seem like obstacles, sometimes seem like problems and how we overcome them are really great for us to share with each other. So it's not always success stories of what we think because it's never like that. You know, the root is so like, bah. Uh, it's never the straight and narrow road to um, what we want to discover for a business. So uh, you guys are all here to learn more about how to create a side hustle as a multi-passionate person. And my belief is that majority of people are pretty multi-passionate. Like we are multifaceted humans. So is it that surprising for us to know that we probably have different interests, different skills, different, uh, uh, you know, approaches of things that we bring to the table when it comes to doing great work. So I'll, um, I will introduce you to these awesome ladies. And we're also getting a third person, she is here, uh, to help us um, with the chat show. But she's just having a bit of technical difficulty. So hopefully we do get her, get her on board. Board, but if not, we're just going to continue the show and make sure that uh, your time is also honored as you join us on the live stream. And talking about live streams, you're very likely also watching us on YouTube or on our Facebook page or on or our Facebook group called The Unconventionalist. Now, the real conversation is going to really be happening on Crowdcast. Uh, and Bettina, the community ambassador, has already posted a link to how you can join Crowdcast. So you can come over here with us on this side uh, and be part of the chat box here. You can ask questions here. You'll be able to do a Q&A with us at the end. Uh, it really is a little bit more of an interactive piece of making sure that you come to Crowdcast. And then uh, you will be able to speak to us and ask your personal questions. We can help you um, um, answer as a group together using our collective intelligence of experience. Um, now, a bit of housekeeping. Uh, before we officially get started. So if you are you are here on Crowdcast, uh, do say hello on the chat box. Tell us uh, where you're from, uh, what side hustle potentially you're working with, uh, or potentially a question that you might have about using your multi-potentialite, uh, multi-potential, uh, multi-passionate, whatever the verb is for you. Hi, Sheila, you're here. <laughs> That's great, we have her here. Um, and to make sure that uh, we get your questions answered as well throughout this call. Now, the best way to submit your question, if you hover, if you're in Crowdcast, hover underneath the video and you'll see a ask a question tab. This will be a way for me and the ladies to go into this question tab and then start to timestamp when we do answer it so that when you watch it as a replay, you wanna come back to the questions that you asked, you can just literally click on the timestamp and then it'll sort of fast forward to the moment we answer your question. That is the best way to do it. Now, if you're asking uh, for it on the chat box, Bettina will very likely paste it into the ask a question tab anyway. So we keep organized of the questions and we don't miss it uh, in the sort of thread that is happening on the chat box. But do say hello, tell us where you are, what side hustle you're working with and your questions and your uh, potential problems that you have around building a business around multi-passions. Um, okay, and also don't forget to share. A lot of people are very likely in your friends group, your network that are might be thinking about starting a business or having trouble articulating what they wanna do in their business and having bigger themes around their business. Uh, there is a invite um, uh, button on the top right-hand corner uh, of Crowdcast uh, that you can just share uh, in the platforms that you're in. So LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, Facebook, whatever your poison these days, maybe all of that. <laughs> uh, and then you can absolutely be helping other people as well. Um, come on here and learn from us today. Um, now, Felicia, I see you in the chat box saying that my sound has disappeared. I'm not sure if anyone else can, can you guys hear me? On the, I can, you can hear me. So uh, Felicia, uh, it, if she can't hear me, Felicia, restart. <laughs> restart or um, refresh your screen. And hopefully you're on Chrome. I feel like tech is always one of the, the issues here, isn't it? Uh, Kyle can hear loud and clearly. Okay, so we're, we're, we're isolated to at least just a Felicia problem, <laughs> which is great. Um, okay, so let's get started by introducing all of you. Now, first, before we go there, I want to make sure that we can indeed hear Sheila. Sheila, are you there? there? Yeah, I can hear yeah, you. I can hear you. Oh, but your video is a little bit... Um, 
skewed, but that's okay. It might be because of the bandwidth because of where you're staying in Bali, but that's okay. We'll just um, make sure that um, your audio is at least good, but we can hear you, so that's good. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just go around of a bit of a round table to introduce you guys in the first three minutes or so each, uh, so people can know where uh, your background, your, a bit about your story, and where you're at right now um, with your business um, past the Bali retreat, because all these ladies came to the Bali retreat almost a year ago, can you believe? We uh, haven't been together uh, in uh, Bali in the tropics for a year. And then you'll learn more about what we experienced at the retreat because we are running another one. We only run it once a year. Uh, and it's coming up April 22nd to the 28th. If you want to find out more about it and book a free call to talk to me about your strategies and if you're a good fit to come to the retreat, uh, feel free to uh, click the button below this video, which is um, just a button that will take you into the Bali retreat page. But you'll learn more about what these ladies discovered and learned with each other in that experience uh, as well in the call. So let's start with Heather. Uh, Heather, why don't you do a quick intro to yourself and a bit about your story? Uh, well, I'm Heather. I'm Canadian. I'm currently living in Thailand, though, and I came here very accidentally. It wasn't a plan, which was kind of exciting. So I started out my career as a teacher and I uh, was living internationally for the last 10 years. Um, I moved into educational publishing, kind of into the corporate world um, from the classroom and uh, thought this was going to be my forever career and this is going to be the thing I was going to do and realize that, you know, it, it wasn't. Um, and by I started another job and two months in, surprise got made redundant. The company decided to move all the operations to China and uh, I had lost this new job I just started. So mm. I was actually really happy though. I saw it as a great opportunity. It was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. I'd been trying to make a change for a long time. I'd always wanted to start a side business. I'd kind of been pecking away at something, working full time, and it just wasn't, you know, kind of really working. So I seized the opportunity and gave away, sold everything I owned, jumped on a plane, came to Thailand, and I'm now doing this location independent freelance online gig um, full time and, and trying to, um, yeah, get some get get this actual side business that I've been working on for a really long time up and running. So it's been a very interesting and unexpected experience, but a, a fantastic one and a lot of learnings along the way. It's been really interesting. It's so funny when sometimes things happen to us like a layoff, you know, or a firing sometimes, you know, that is horrible to experience, but it's almost a push we need to actually go, yes. okay, I do actually stop, need to stop waiting on making these mm -hmm. changes. And a force is, I mean, pain and pleasure, right? We are uh, people that are attracted to pain a lot of the times to make a move. Yep. Uh, but yeah. I can't wait to share what you have learned uh, later on uh, in this in this uh, webinar on on what's happened for you since because it's not been that long since you've quit your job. So that's the chunk yeah. of time that you finally have received to dedicate to actually making some moves right in your business for yeah. sure, which is awesome. Thanks, Heather. Yeah. Uh, Amy, a little bit about your story. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Amy. I'm from Squamish, British Columbia, Canada, and. Um, like Lydia said, I joined her Bali retreat just about a year ago. And I really, at the time, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to create for a business. I just thought that it would be something I wanted to do for myself. Um, I currently work in my family business and we're in uh, concrete, sand and gravel production and real estate development, which is something I never thought I would end up doing is being involved in that in that type of industry. But um, yeah, so I, I met with Lydia and, and the amazing people at the retreat and came up with a, a great idea. I still wasn't necessarily 100% sold on what I was going to be doing. Um, came home and worked a bit more on the idea. But um, over the past four months, my role at work has changed and has oh. gotten far more intense and actually very interesting. Um, and so my side hustle has been kind of put on the on the shelf for the time being. Um, as I kind of settle into this new role. Um, but yeah, exactly. The whole topic is being multi-passionate and I love to do something that's my own um, and create a business that, that helps. People. So what I want to do is help women to uh, find their adventurous side and rediscover what adventure means to them by trying new sports, traveling, trying new foods, anything that kind of gets them out of their comfort zone um, and helps them experience something new. So it, it'll still happen, I'm sure, but for now, um, I've been diving headfirst into real estate development. Yeah, and, and that's the thing we want to talk about today. It's like not uh, your multi passions may not be only reserved for one project 
or one business or one career trajectory, right? It's a, it's a body of work of things that we are building and changing constantly, depending on how our life is changing. Uh, and I think a lot of people are in your situation, Amy, because, you know, as Heather said, you know, she got sort of like laid off in some way, you know, that sort of forced her to do the thing. Uh, but a lot of people are in jobs that, they, you know, they don't hate completely, you know, uh, if they do want ha to have this desire to do something on the side, but it's being able to juggle, right, both and going, what is the right time to sort of back particular horses you know, that we have, uh, have available to us. And sometimes it is actually keeping your head down and building a role out in your current employment while not forgetting about the project that you really want to start and learning how to juggle that. And I think that's a, a great insight um, and, and that we'll receive from you on how that, uh, especially being in a family business, it's not easy to disappoint your family. You know, so that's part of the journey as well, right, for you. Um, and, and, and learning how to actually get more out of your job because as you said your role change things are becoming a bit more interesting for you and how can that actually make your career a bit happier so you're not brutally going to work and going oh i really don't want to be here you know but actually finding ways to appreciate the job finding ways to learn from the job and actually potentially be utilizing what you're learning into uh your projects in the future as well which is really great mm -hmm. um okay so for sheila and hopefully she is here sheila are you here can you hear us Yes, I can. Can you hear okay. us? Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, yes. great. Uh, so, you see Bettina sort of, uh, I know. Um, potentially, what has happened is what Bettina said on the chat box is that if your connection is a bit uh, weak or not stable, depending yeah. on where you're at, uh, Crowdcast will turn off the video yeah. and then sort of just only give you limited view so that we're not using too much bandwidth for you. But we can hear you, which is the only thing that really counts, uh, which is great. Um, Sheila, can you give us a little snippet of your story, your background, and what um, uh, what you're currently sort of in the, the uh, currently working on or um, going into at the moment? Sure. Um, so, um, hi everyone. So, hi everyone. Sheila. Sheila. Um, from Malaysia. Um, from Malaysia. And, and my family and I relocated really really to Singapore about four years ago. Where I took on portfolio for my legal career um, and it was during that time that uh, um, I think my world came crashing out uh, crashing down um, I was very burnt out uh, my husband was in Hong Kong and um, it caused a lot of strain on the family and on our careers um, as we were completely out of our comfort zone uh, I left my months uh, to join my husband uh, in Hong Kong and I think that was the that was me when I decided that it to relook at everything and just press pause um, mm. for continuous throughout a full-time job I don't know anything else apart from working 16 hours a day managing time zones um, it was very very frightening just to even take a sabbatical because we all come from a place where we define ourselves by what we do and how productive we are um turning out contracts turning out deals and activity just with that and we feel good about it um mm. but i also know i'm a happy mom happy wife when i'm also productive and working so the grass is always green on the other side because suddenly now you know it's nice doing yoga and having coffee and chatting about life um and so roses but the productivity was not there and I didn't know what I wanted to do but I knew I was meant for good things um, and so that's why um, I came to Bali last year um, we all know what our passions are we all know what we want to do it's just we don't address it um, and I think that mm -hmm. forced me to address and deeper, uh, what my visions were and, and this was something that I shared with my husband I mean this was our sort of little mini retirement plan that when we have the funds, if the time, and we have the capacity, um, we would actually uh, put something together and build a business that was close to our heart. Um, and I think the retreat and being with me and Lydia helped me put that in small bites and on paper because I think I mm. had difficulty just getting started because it had to be perfect, it had to be huge, it had to be world class. Uh, that's how in 15 years has just gotten me. And, and in this season, in this age, um, you know, I, I couldn't do anything small. It needed to be big, but I couldn't get started. Um, and I think the retreat put a lot in perspective. Um, just digressing post-retreat, um, Bali was good. Bali was a 
in Bali was uh, something that I put together with my husband. Um, we even got together in Bali after, um, and put the, uh, the visions out. But when we came back to Singapore, um, you know, in a very real environment, uh, reality took over. Very difficult to do even the 90 day milestones or to do you know, all of that because family took over, life took over, and Singapore is a very, very hard environment to mm. pivot to something like this. Um, you know, again, caused a whole strain, you know, because this is a whole breakthrough, you know, of the family. And my husband was holding a full job and he probably did underestimate it because things were changing and uh, it was, I had to just show it on and I couldn't do it. And so I, I put a pause on that and I left it. Um, it's taken me nine, uh, eight months. I think Lydia, you know my story to Lydia and I've told her, uh, I'm now ready to relook at it again. So it's taken me nine months, eight months after the retreat, look at it again and know that you know, this is something I'm ready now, you know, um, with or without, you know, um, the substantial support from kickstart it. I know I'm ready now to take this on and, you know, to kickstart it um, in whatever way, whether I'm doing a full-time job, doing a part-time job. Um, this is very, very inherently real to me right now that I should uh, do this. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's interesting, interesting when, when uh, uh, oh, oh, a bit of an echo here. Um, Sheila, do you have your tabs uh, for Safari and all that closed down? Yes, I do. So that there's no, you do, okay. Yes. Um, and also for the other ladies, have every all, other tab that's closed down so that there's, it's not coming from from Safari or Firefox. So somebody does a, a, um, uh, a bit of an echo, but it's going out again. So maybe that was just a bit of a bug. Um, but what I was gonna say about Sheila's situation is that it's interesting when you get going, try to go into business um, with family you know, and especially someone close to you, like your spouse, uh, it can be, it, it can be difficult sometimes to actually um, see yourself going through with a business idea when you've, you've put in your mind this reliance on this other person, you know, to do something. And I think Sheila, because we've talked about uh, your circumstance uh, previously when you came to, uh, came again to Bali, uh, is that a lot of that, that um, situation sort of allowed you to, to learn that you actually are the driver of the business, that you actually don't need your husband to be as involved as you initially planned for, uh, because now it's allowing you to really step into your role of being the visionary of the business. Uh, and things change all the time about who's involved, what we wanna do with the business. I mean, we're gonna talk a lot about pivots in this uh, call. Um, and it doesn't always mean that the idea is garbage or the path you were you know, pursuing was a waste of time because without these obstacles that come in the way, which by the way is gonna happen, uh, whether or not you think you have a kick-ass idea or not, it will always come with pivots. It will always come with, that's the entrepreneurial mindset. It's not about things are laid out for you like an SOP that you used to have in, in corporate where you know exactly what your role is going to be about uh, and that doesn't change very often but the con of that is that when you're in a role that has that sort of strict guidelines of how to operate you're also not exploring other parts of you that can be activated or acknowledged when you go through change we don't have as much change for example in corporate at times because it's pre-planned out for us but when you go into an entrepreneurship venture you make the rules which is what you wanted but also super scary right? When you're the one all of a sudden um, responsible, actually, uh, for your next steps, um, which is which is also a journey. I think we have we will be talking about what that feels like, you know, uh, what feels like a problem may not be actually a problem and how to overcome these obstacles uh, by changing your lens, your view, right, of how you perceive this problem, how you utilize this problem as insight uh, and move forward from that. But I want to start with my first question, which is a lot of a big question people have around developing ideas, right, for their business, um, looking at how they can take old experiences, things they've been drawn to and realizing what they've been drawn to and creating sort of a first idea or multiple ideas that they want to explore. Now, people get stuck all the time here it, for many reasons. One is uh, the fear of failing like wanting to choose so perfectly that like, I'm not gonna move ahead until um, I get this perfect. And that's actually a myth because you're not gonna get it perfect or get it, well, nothing's perfect anyway, but you're not gonna get clarity at all without making any moves, right? It's the clarity comes with imperfect action. Um, that's the first myth. Um, the second thing I think is 
um, people are unsure if that's the one thing they want to do for the rest of their lives. How many of you ladies have probably thought they're going, I should, I have to die with this thing that I'm about yeah. to, right, develop. And that's another misconception is that actually we, we're going to die with multiple things that we contribute into the world. You're not actually be thinking about on your deathbed, I wonder if my business model was the perfect model. Like you're not really, right? What you're going to think about is a lot higher level values. Like, have I changed someone's life? Was I contributing to, you know, like my time here on earth, it, it was it valuable to other people and to myself? Did I make a dent in some sort in my little, you know, piece of my life, you know, it, it, as part of the world? Um, did I do the things that I said I want to do and be proud of it and not be afraid of what people said, right? You know, um, so on a higher level, that's what we really think. Is. But at the current level, we're sort of in panic mode about making the right decision. So I want to sort of um, explore this question about how have you ladies, for example, started thinking, and it might be all different from all of you, um, when you came to what you're working on today, what sort of helped you learn more about yourself, learn more about what is uh, a bigger message potentially you want to share with your work, uh, and also utilized things that you are interested in, things that you're good at. You may or may not have been paid to do it before, but you know you can be good at it. How did you explore that part of yourself to utilize these weapons of choice, not, not just one skill, right? Not just one interest at times. It's sort of an array of like a tool belt, right? That you carry with you and go, actually, you get all of me and my uniqueness in this business if I actually take more than one skill with me. How have you guys sort of been implementing that or got to your ideas from using some of your multi-passionate uh, talents? Um, let's start with Amy. Amy, you mentioned you, you, your business is all around helping women get braver, right? Step a little bit out of their edge of comfort zone and using the idea of adventures and sports and, you know, activities as a way to explore that. How did that sort of come about for you? And, and what did you have to realize about your multi-passions in order to do that? So it well, was a few years ago, I, I, I decided I wanted to be spending more time with my girlfriends and rather than starting a book club or just getting together to drink wine, you know, once a month that I wanted us to learn new stuff together. So I created a Facebook group and kind of invited a bunch of my different girlfriends and they didn't necessarily all know each other and said, let's all get together. And then once a month, someone will take turns picking a, a topic or an activity and we'll plan it kind of together and we'll use, um, you know, the fact that there's say like 10 of us going to do something to maybe get a discount uh, and we'll all go do something fun once a month. So we went paddle boarding and we went rock climbing and we did a self-defense class. And I missed the one where they went to circus camp and yeah. um, just stuff like that. And it was, it was so much fun and it was so different. And I think that, you know, and so I had this kind of going on in the background. And then when I got to Bali, my idea was more around, you know, I love to travel and I travel quite a bit. And um, I'm always having people tell me like, oh, you're always off on some new adventure and you should write about it. And so I was kind of more on like a travel adventure blog type of um, path or thought that that's where I was going. And through the retreat and kind of discovering, you know, what is it that you're already doing? You know, um, and Lydia, you mentioned this at a, at a um, workshop I saw you at um, in Whistler was what do people always tell you that you're good at or they ask you for help with or those kind of things and those you know that thing of planning an activity or getting people to try new things or you know people always say to me like oh you always know what's happening you, like, you always know where to find out this information and mm. so I felt like I was this resource and I was kind of this hub where I could bring these people together and and for the most part, I'm willing to try these new things. And so I'm also willing to be a bit of a guinea pig and right. say to my friends or other people, you know, hey, look at me. Like, I'm not some, you know, Olympic athlete. I'm not, you know, I'm not an avid mountain biker or anything. And But I'm going to go out and try. And if I can try, then, then you can try. Mm. And it's just helping people break that, you know, barrier of fear. Um, which again is something people say like, oh, you're, you're so adventurous. And I never would say that to describe myself as being adventurous. I think a lot of what I do is just kind of fun and average. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well, there's people who are, um, who are kind of a level behind me. And if I can kind of help bring them to the next level, you know, then what can we all do together? Mm. So that's kind of my idea has, has come about is like, yeah, it's just all things that, I do. Um, 
and the fact that, you know, I live um, in Squamish, which is, you know, the adventure capital of Canada, and we have all these amazing sports here. And for the most part, it seems like you have to be a high level athlete to even start. And I think it becomes really daunting or inaccessible to people. And so, but I've broken that barrier. I've you know, I've made those connections and who do you get lessons from and, you know, who do you talk to and where do you get the equipment? Um, and so I can provide that resource now for other people as well. Mm. So, and yeah, I just like to try and get out and do as much fun stuff as possible. So yeah, like you said, it's all those random pieces of what I do on a regular basis, which I think are just normal. Right. Um, that that people that would become a skill that other people don't have mm. um, that I can help them with. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and deep interest counts for something, isn't it? Because if you're the case study, it's very likely you're the one representing the concept. Right. Which is like at first you thought I was just trying new things, but actually it's a bit bigger than that. It's like not wanting to give yourself that pressure of like, I have to be this, you know, advanced snowboarder, you know, or rock climber to try anything of that sort, you know, it's like allowing yourself that permission to do it in a level that you are comfortable with. It's just a little slightly outside of your comfort zone. Uh, and that allows you to have that experience without the limiting belief that unless I'm only really good at it, then I'm allowed to try it, you know, which mm -hmm. a lot of women obviously feel that way. And I think from you trying to manage that for yourself, um, you are the guinea pig, right? And I think when you are the guinea pig for your clients, very likely there's a trust factor, you know, that's built into it. Like you understand how I feel like because you two are shitting your pants <laughs> before you get on that paddle board, right? Um, but, you know, the, the same concept of how why I want to do something that scares me, you know, more often than not, is because it helps to challenge me to see areas that I am actually quite brave here, you know? And that was a big theme that came out during the retreat is that when we talked about bigger paddleboard because it's not like you're just an adventure tour guide you could have absolutely positioned yourself that way but how much more powerful is when the message is about how can we be brave in small little bits every single day that bravery isn't only for people who are willing to jump off a cliff you know and risk everything that bravery is happening to you and courage can be happening to you every day just by you talking to a stranger at a bus stop you know to trying something you really want to try but you don't think you're going to land in your face anyway you know and you do that and when you keep doing more of that bravery increases courage increases and you can be quite a different person and how that ripples effects in a way to other areas of your life where you could also do these small bits of, mm -hmm. of, of things so i think do you think that that really helped you to know more about the message you share so you're not like saying oh just come on an adventure but you're saying here's more of what happens to you when you can come on this adventure with these ladies yeah and i think that's part of it too is it's with a group of people who are like you um that was my kind of my thing too is a lot of times i don't necessarily want to go do something by myself but i didn't have you know friends that were you know readily available all the time or were interested in the same thing that i wanted to do so i really want to be able to create a bit of a community of people so that you know you feel comfortable going out to this activity by yourself because you're going to meet other women just like you uh. and then from there it's like okay now we took this paddle boarding camp together and now let's go paddle boarding like let's go do this stuff together and be out and so i like i, I always like to be able to connect either you know people to other people or uh. people to a new passion or something like that. I like to find ways to get people excited about about life and about the stuff that we have, you know, so accessible to us here. So yeah, yeah it's it's it is again, yeah, it's it's always about more than learning the activity because mm. you know for me it could be simple as something or something as simple as like going to a learn how to paint night. Or yeah. so it's not really like you'd say like that's not really adventurous. It's like, well I can't draw like right. barely a stick man and now i'm gonna go to like i'll learn how to paint night and i'm gonna have to show people art like that's scary to me so you know i think something it, it seems like a you know it's not life-threatening um but it's nice to be able to go out and do that kind of stuff um and 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 get something more out of it it's more about that i always say it's like ripping off the band-aid mm. and like and jumping in and that could be anything right like could be anything it's just something that kind of you know, puts that little fear in your, you know, in the pit of your stomach yeah. that you have to overcome. Yeah, absolutely. I also love the insight you had about yourself that you are a connector because that can sometimes give you a clue as to the role you play 
in your business? You know, how many of us sort of, you could have easily gone, oh my God, I have to be the one to be the adventure guide. Like I have to learn paddleboard to an advanced level that I can teach these ladies. I'm going to be a painter, you know, to be able to take, teach them painting class. But you're like, no, actually I'm a connector. I'm the one that curates these adventures. I'm the ones that connects with the women that should probably be on these adventures, but I don't need to be the one that facilitates. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm the organizer. I'm the you know, that's been so many part of your because I know you're part of the Squamish Festival. Uh, is it the Squamish Music Festival? What is it called again? No, Logger Sport. A Logger Festival. Sport Festival. Sorry. Yeah. Um, and, and you sort of go, well, what does logging have to do with uh, this? But actually, it's the role you play there. You're also an organizer there. You're also the one that taps into the volunteers and the communities and, and bring people together. Right. To one weekend event. That's going to be pretty awesome. And so roles that you've played in the past i think is something to consider because that's been a, a role that you played that was really natural for you and it may not always be the direct obvious thing of that you have to be the one doing the actual delivery right of the facilitation or the adventure or the coaching or whatever sometimes it's actually about bringing people together curating the instructors or curating you know the people that should belong together and that's the job you play Right. And that's really interesting yeah, to look yeah. at um, roles uh, that you play in businesses for sure. Thanks, Amy. That was an excellent story. And Felicia said she, that she really, your idea really resonates with her. She loves the idea, which is awesome. And Bettina said you should have a retreat. I'll love to come. And I'll be coming <laughs> back to Vancouver in the summer. So hopefully you do have an adventure camp because I want to, I would love to attend as an avatar actually, because that speaks to me too. Um, Heather, what about you? I know there's been several, you know, changes that have happened since the inaugural idea for your business to what you've developed since then. Um, how have you been learning more about things that you care about, what you're good at, how you can help, and how has that sort of brought together for you for what you're working on today? Oh, yes, it's been uh, quite an experience. So I started out, I've been working with Lydia for quite some time, and I started working with her, like I said, while I was still in full-time work, always knew I wanted to do some sort of business, be my own boss, never knew what I wanted to do, and didn't really understand this uh, idea of kind of being a purpose-based or a service-based type of business. I always thought, oh, I had to have an online store. Or I'm going to have to sell something mm -hmm. or I'm going to, you know. So when I started working with Lydia, she was, you know, you've said to take, you know, it was all about repurposing skills that you already have into a new, into a new package, basically. So my original idea was working, taking my teaching background um, and all the aspects of that that I enjoyed and, and repurposing it into a new format with new, um, People. So rather than a traditional classroom or even just teaching a course myself, I would essentially be helping teach the teachers. So I'd be working with, you know, coaches or people who are developing a program or a retreat or some sort of learning experience, um, but have maybe never taught before. A lot of people think that it's really easy to show up and just have a room full of people and, oh. and chat about something and everybody learns something and goes home happy. And it's actually there's a formula, there's a system and it, and it can vary from situation to situation. It's not quite as clean cut as you know, here's a template or step one, step two, step three. So um, I'd started working with, um, you know, coaches and various coaches. It was really good experience. I, I met a lot of people through this group, through Lydia, um, the connections that you make when you start working with, you know, like-minded people who maybe not even in the same kind of realm, but you know, it's interesting when you put a call out and somebody knows somebody who knows somebody and you get to have a conversation with that person to find out a bit more. So I started working with um, these various different types of coaches um, with their learning experiences. And it was, what was happening basically was I was having a lot of conversations. I was helping these people put together these learning experiences and I, it just wasn't what I was expecting. I think there was a lot of um, things that were coming up from these people I was working with um, that, uh, you know, I felt like I didn't have the answers for, or I just didn't want to talk about, I didn't want to help them with that. Right. Um, I, you know, was maybe attracting some people who weren't really ready to put in the work. They probably weren't ready at the right point to be, you know, actually putting together some sort of learning experience. So I basically was, I basically hit a wall is what happened. Yeah. And I, and I kind of, I, I went, shit, I, damn, this is not what I thought. And I thought I had this sorted out and this is just makes total sense. I'm going to take my time as a teacher and the stuff I like, and I like personal development and, oh, this just seemed to wrap it up with a bow and like, let's make, let's start a business. And the truth is you never know what something's going to be like until you do it. Mm. So your, your mind has this amazing function where it, it, it cannot predict the future. It cannot predict what you're going to feel like in a particular situation. You can guess, you can have a good idea, you can base it on past experience, but you're never actually going to know until you're doing the thing. 
And because the thing is something I'd never actually done. Oh. Yes, I was teaching and yes, I was taking teaching and learning experience situation and reapplying it. I'd never done it with coaches. I'd never done it in this coaching capacity and one on one and working with adults. Yeah, <laughs> really. that's right. You know, I taught children. So, I mean, too bad kids sit down, you got to learn. And they were like, okay, but as an adult, it's a totally different conversation when they're not doing the work. Oh. It's a, it's an awkward conversation to have, you know, with someone to go, you didn't actually do what we talked about last week. So what is it, you know, what is it you want to do this week? Because it's kind of a waste of your time. It's a waste of my time. This is going nowhere. So there was a lot of things happening. And um, I mean, I, and I did have some good experiences, but it wasn't all bad, but I did have some good experiences. And what happened was I hit this wall and I thought it's teaching. I don't want to talk about teaching. I, this is, uh, this is bringing back memories. This is like, this is bringing up stuff for me. I don't, this is, uh, this is feeling really icky. I don't like this. And I got really attached to the idea of it being teaching. And I was really kind of labeling a lot of things. And I was, um, I, I, my brain, I felt like my brain couldn't function past a certain point. Like it was like, you know, I just couldn't see outside this little tiny circle of where I kind of started mm -hmm. and plotted myself and to try and repurpose or re um, purpose it and restate it or look at it a different way. I just, my brain just couldn't go there. It was just, it was, it was actually a bizarre experience because I really wanted to believe that I was in a position where I was like, I'm, you know, starting this business and I'm really open to how this might go. And, oh, I'm having all these conversations, but it was still like, I, it was a, it was a, an, an honest to God barrier, like an actual block. I'd never experienced anything quite this like real and profound. And it was like a solid wall and, oh. and uh, I couldn't get out of it. So basically I just said, right, I'm going to leave this for a little while. I'm just, I'm not going to drop it, but I'm just going to let things kind of stew in my brain. I'm just going to keep doing some stuff. I was now at this point in Thailand. I thought I'm going to experience this amazing country. I'm going to meet new people. I'm going to have conversations. I'm going to, you know, and just let it kind of sit. And after many conversations, I've had a lot of conversations with Lydia. I've had a lot of conversations with people in this group and these people I've worked with through the, through the, um, through Lydia basically, who are also starting businesses. And I, and everybody was so helpful and everybody's kind of giving you these ideas and and opinions and, and advice on kind of how to repurpose it and how to relook at it and how to reframe it. And it just wasn't happening. It was just so frustrating. Yeah. And so I was like, that's it. I'm done. I'm that's it. I'm just gonna, no, I'm not gonna do that anymore, but I'm in Thailand. I don't have a full-time job. I need to start making money. So I was thinking, what am I going to do? So I was like, right, it's just about money now. I just need to find something that I can quickly get going online. What am I going to do? So I started looking into doing some stuff and magically through that, I kind of refound my way back to kind of where I started. So what's happened is because I was prepared to drop, because I was really just thinking this is not related to this at all. Um, I started having more conversations. I started talking to people. I started um, revisiting people I'd worked with um, before in my previous beta lab and asking them different questions and just saying, what else is it? that you want help with? What are the other challenges that you're facing as you create a course? And why do you think you haven't done it to this point? And if you were working with someone who was helping you to create a learning experience, what would be your ideal person? Like, what would you want them to help you with? Is it actually like creating curriculum or is it something else? And the answers people were giving me were totally not what I'd been doing before. And it was stuff that I thought, well, I can't do this. It was a lot of marketing. It was a lot about platforms. It was a lot about um, curating an audience. It was a lot about social media stuff. And it was like, well, that, okay, well, that's, so this is really not going to happen because I can't do that stuff. I don't know how to do that. Mm. And so then I thought, well, I'm just going to start helping, you know, I need money. So I'm just going to start working kind of in an, in an assistant capacity. I'm going to start reaching out to coaches and just say, do you need some help with some admin stuff? Do you need some help with, you know, I can put some stuff on social media. I can help you kind of refine this, whatever. And really, really quickly, what happened is, I found a way to work with these people that was still helping them with courses or with challenges or with their learning experience, but in a much wider capacity. So it wasn't about a particular learning experience they were um, planning. It was about the learning experience as a whole. Right. So as a coach, everything they put out there is an experience exactly. for their people. So true. everything. So their website, their social media, how they talk to people, how they create a course, how they make a challenge, mm -hmm. the words they use to describe their, their, um, their coaching business, how, you know, what they can help people with all that stuff is an experience. So I've realized very unexpectedly that it can be 
so multifaceted. It might actually me, be me helping them with their organization. It might actually be helping them develop workflow processes because they're so all over the place and they're throwing all this stuff out there and the messages that they're giving to people are really mixed or they're really content heavy. People are not really clear on what they're doing. So it might be helping them with workflow. It might be helping them with the course. It might be helping them with um, authentic um, engagement on social media to help explain what they're doing. So it's all an experience that I'm still able to help with, but it didn't have to be labeled down to this, like you're planning an experience through your right. business. It's like, I can actually help you with the entire client, you know, experience. So it was this bizarre epiphany that I'm still like kind of reeling from. And it was just like, oh, geez, Lydia was right. Like she was, she's been saying this, but it just, you can't see it if you can't see it. And until right. you get to that point, and it really was a matter of me going, I'm, I'm totally not gonna, I'm not talking about that anymore. We're not doing that. This is what I'm gonna do. And it was for a totally different purpose. Oh. It was, it was like, I, I'm gonna make money. I'm really good at helping people. I'm really good at admin tasks. I can do that really quickly. And then, and then I was like, oh, can I just, I was helping this, I'm working with this one coach and I was like, okay, I'm looking at your opt-in and I'm thinking I have some thoughts and I would like write two pages of notes. Right. Like, okay, here's what I think we should do. And she's like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I was like, oh yeah. Okay. So I'm kind of back to where I started, but in a much more kind of organic yeah. like way where it feels like it doesn't have to just be about a course. Oh. It's about the experience for them as a whole yeah. and, and them create an experience on all levels, all platforms every day for the people that they're working with. Oh my God. I love that story because you know, one of my favorite books is called the obstacles, the way right by Ryan holiday. Yes. And that is your obstacles, the way moment, because it was like, actually it, it wasn't for that block that literally that wall that you cannot yeah. overcome. You wouldn't have been forced to, look at it a different way right and i think that was also during the moment because you're you, heather you're in my academy uh and we had a mm -hmm. guest speaker there and perry uh yes. on an awesome talk called uh, the mac the, me the mechanics of a breakthrough uh and and she sort of talked about one one thing about sometimes you just have to burn it down the ground and say fuck it yes and that doesn't yes. always mean that you forget about you just go i'm gonna park this thing because obviously looking at it like this isn't working i've tried it mm -hmm. many ways i have given it a shot i'm just gonna park it here okay without saying I just want to break up with this completely but then that released you the pressure of only exploring that path right and sort of that yeah. allowed you to then get braver into like maybe I should start talking I love that idea of you talking to the people because that's the thing we miss out a lot in business building yeah and pivoting is that we don't we just do it ourselves we just go I think I should figure it out myself because I can't tell people that actually I have questions because I'm supposed to be the expert but actually right. your customer loves talking to you they love telling you their problems they love expressing their opinion on things and that's really really a great practice to have what you talked about this beta lab right again for you to yeah. understand whether or not you want to put all your eggs in one basket of being a learning experience coach is to actually do the thing, right? Go and get these yes. coaches, do it for free, do it for a low cost, whatever it is, and actually let yourself see what it feels like to do that job. And sometimes you do realize that your circumstance, I kind of didn't want to do that. I don't want to only talk about teaching, right? Yeah. But, but actually on a natural level, you are teaching. Whether you know what's happening or not, you're already teaching them things, but it's not about teaching the teacher potentially, right? That was what revealed right. itself to you. Um, and then you did it again with that, you know, uh, more better communication or really getting in real conversations by going back. I thought that's so smart, you know, going back to old customers and going, hey, obviously we've worked together. You know what I'm all about, but what else? What else is bothering you really? You think it's curriculum, you think it's exercise creation, but I kind of want to peel back the layers a little bit. What else is going on in your world that maybe you might need support on? And that's how you, you sort of have come down this new path. You will not know what you don't know until you ask, mm -hmm. until you give mm -hmm. people the intimacy, especially I think all of you that are here are people, 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 right? Like you are very likely building a business that connects to another human. You might be a direct, asset to that human so people are hiring you right as the expert so that needs to affect the way that how we market and how we also get gain feedback we can't rely on just emails or rely on awesome social media awesome quotes for the day to actually really get into our customers heads the power of conversation and the power of actually like picking a few people to get on the call with, really giving them your time uh, is so important to get insight. So you're not actually guessing. You're actually really going, what can I help you with? How can I serve you? And that is gonna be so much clearer for what you have to create, right? Um, yeah. And so 
as you now have been working with um, sort of uh, actually in a way the same audience, just in a different yep. approach, yep. what has that brought you to realize, you know, you talked about like you thinking you might not be good at the marketing part or not good at this. How have you sort of gone, actually, I can still make a dent in how people market, but attacking it in a different level and actually utilizing something I am indeed, indeed good at. How's that sort of been for you? Um, in this particular situation, exciting actually, and, and like empowering. So whereas before I was, even though I had this experience as a teacher, I'm a trained teacher. I went to university to be a teacher, but yet when people would ask me questions and stuff, I was like, well, I don't know. And it depends. And what do you think? And well, I don't, you know, and I was like, but this, I'm like, Oh, listen, I don't know, but like I can research it. I can do a class on it. There's tons of stuff online. I'm a social media user myself. I'm obsessed with Instagram. I see lots of stuff. I am an online coach's dream because I sign up for every course, yeah. every opt-in. I have seen all the websites. I'm, and I'm a tough customer. You're like, in the audience cookies. too, right? You, you're looking at yeah. their business as a customer. Yeah. So yeah. 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 And, you know, I think, Lydia, you always talk about this. And I think there's been so many things that like the penny is finally dropped. Like you've been saying so many things to me for, you know, a year. And I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm, I get that. But it's literally been in the last two months where I've gone, oh, like it, it, it's, it's just, it's like sunk in. So things like you just have to, you need to pretend you're the second grader teaching the first grader. All you need to know is all the stuff you need to know in first grade. Yeah. So whatever that might look like. So the, you know, one coach I'm working with right now, she's, you know, she, yeah, she knows social media and yeah, she's on Instagram, whatever, but I've done a couple of courses. I've really kind of looked into it really quickly and studied up some stuff. And, you know, there's, it's amazing what you can learn online very quickly if you know where to look. And it's not about restudying or taking all this time to like learn something new before you put it out there. It's kind of being reactionary to a question. So it's like, okay, well, what about this on social? I wonder if there's a way we can do this. Let me find out. Mm -hmm. Now I know. Yeah. And so now, I've, I've answered that question for her. And when it comes to working with the next coach, I'll go, well, listen, this is what this other coach did. Here's right. how, here's how we handle that. And every little bit of the way I'm learning a little bit more and putting a little bit more into my arsenal and my tool yeah. belt, but it doesn't have to be like all encompassing and immediate. So when I, when I'm talking to these new, cl new clients, which are the same clients really, yeah. but in this new capacity, I'm really clear with them. I say, listen, this is what I think I can help you with, but I'm open to, um, other things. So I'm not, the other thing that I've learned and this is my other epiphany is down with labels. Stop trying to give yourself a title. Mm. Stop trying to say, I am this, I am a learning and development coach. I am a course creator. I am a whatever, because it, it does in your own brain kind of limit you and put you into a box. Yeah. And so when I'm working with these clients, you know, it's, it's bizarre to get what your brain does because it's, you know, Oh, well, I can't help you with marketing because I, you know, I don't really know, but actually, on the level that they want the marketing, I kind of do, or I can, or I can at least collaborate with them. And that's how I'm presenting this new um, working experience with people is I want to be your co-collaborator. Collaborator. I want us to work together. I want us to learn from each other. And kind of my idea is to kind of put some systems in place and help them organize their thoughts and help get some stuff out and then kind of put them out into the world. Yeah. Like I don't necessarily need to work with them forever. Yeah. This is kind of a a process where I help you get to a certain point. Now you know what I know, you can go and do your thing and maybe you need to work with the next person and the next you know, marketing strategist or the mm. next person. So I don't pretend to know all the things and I'm much more comfortable with being honest now and saying, listen, I can help you with some of the marketing and here's kind of where my, my limits would be with this. But if you wanna try and do more, let's work together and see what we can figure out together. And maybe we can, if you're okay with a bit of trial and error and we can try this and if it doesn't work, I need you to understand that I'm kind of learning this as well. So, and of course, most people go, oh yeah, like, yay, let's do this. I'd, I'd love to learn this. So yeah. they just kind of want someone in it too. So that you've got a buddy when you're learning it because we all come from this corporate world where you gotta be right and you don't need to take risks because you're in a, you know, a defined kind of circle. And, and you know, you think, well, I stick to my, my things. Here's my job description. Here's my title. Here's what I can do. Yeah. You don't do that because that's not my job. You're not paying me to do that. So no one ever goes outside of their kind of job description. Mm. Whereas now I've discovered, keep it open, keep it free flowing, keep it organic to a certain limit. Like obviously I can't do everything and I don't want to, but it opens it up for when someone comes to you and says, hey, listen, I was thinking about this. Do you think we could, like, do you have any idea how to do that? And I go, well, I, like I've never done it, but I've seen it and I've done this and I've, you know, so then you can kind of work on it together. And that's been a huge epiphany for me is that, 
everything is a process and you don't need to know all the answers now. Totally. And as long as someone you're in, upfront with someone when you're working with them and say, listen, this is what I can help you with. I'm happy to help with other stuff, but just so you know, I'm not pretending I'm an expert at this. So let's yeah. just, you know, keep it, you know, like that. So it's been a lot of, um, like I said, the pennies dropped on a lot of things, which has been so exciting and empowering. And I, and it's, it's been a really mm. good, good last few months, let's just say. Yeah. yeah. And I think what happened for you in the last two months was because you've finally got the time to actually work on things, you know, and it is in the doing of an aspect of the business or the beta testing or the conversations you're having that actually make the difference because that's actually yeah. what has changed for you really in your determination and your focus. It's not about perfection. It's about actually yeah. going out there and, and being honest, as you said, so you don't feel like a fraud, right? You're just going, here's what I will do and what I'm committed to doing, what you can rely on me for, but also, Hey, there's so much stuff we learn from doing this thing. And so you're going to, we're going to work on that together. I love the idea of co-collaborators and co-conspirators, mm -hmm. you know, in, in yeah. business. I mean, Bettina's my co-conspirator -co here. She doesn't know everything. She's a generalist in a lot of ways, uh, but yeah. you are work together is when we get, even having someone to talk to me to be accountable to someone, me to have someone yep. to not bounce ideas of is amazing. Cause as, a, as an entrepreneur, it can be quite lonely talking to yourself at all times, you know? Uh, and another great insight I think you shared, which I think is a great message for everyone in that verge of finding their niche and, you know, figuring out what to start is that your niche will develop as you do more work around it, you know, and also yeah. looking at different ways. Like, as you said, at first you assumed you cannot help with marketing. But we think of, maybe yeah. you only thought of marketing as like Facebook ads or funnels or email marketing campaigns. Yeah. And that's what got stuck in your head. But you can, you can go, well, when I think of marketing, what does that mean to me? I think of like yeah. better conversations. I think of like yep. better relationship connections with your audience. I think about authenticity. I think about your voice. I think about your message. Now, all of a sudden, that's how you can help in the area of marketing if that's that that area of, of, of help is necessary for particular coaches or whatever that actually don't want to use Facebook ads, what they're really struggling with is actually articulating a yeah. clear message and consistent message on an ongoing basis that appear yeah. in all these different various forms in their business and being able to attract the right people with their voice, with their message, with their mission. Now, that's something yeah. you can do. And so instead of saying, yeah. I'm not a marketing expert, you're saying, actually, no, I'm an expert in helping you tell your story. I'm an expert in helping you attract the right customers with your message. I'm the expert to help you do your thing like way more efficiently without being bogged down by systems and exactly. spreadsheets and, you know, scheduling of social media. Cause I'm going to get your shit together. Okay. I'm the guy who's mm -hmm. going to come in and get your shit together. And that is so, so amazing because all of a sudden there's a reason for you to exist, right? What, rather yeah. than you being conformed into being a digital marketer or a Facebook ad strategist, you don't need yeah. to do that. Marketing is such a big um, industry that you can choose. You can choose your piece. I mean, that's part of our niche class, isn't it? You know, choosing your piece is one way of yes. realizing your niche. It's like, you don't have to do all the things. You just choose one exactly. area that you want to master. And actually you can graduate from you. You can go to someone else and that's great. But I specialize in this piece. And I'm going to help you at least get to the level of readiness for the next Facebook ad strategist or the email exactly. marketing person, which is so awesome. I love your yeah. story. Thanks for sharing that, Heather, for sure. Yeah. Um, Sheila. If you're still here with us, I hope so. I can't see you, but I hopefully can hear you. Sheila, you there? Yes, 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 definitely. Hey. definitely. What? You've been hearing oh these my awesome God. Heather, such well. resilience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> resilience is uh, definitely part of the, the weapon yeah. for sure. I'm still waiting for Amy to come to Asia. So it, I know there's are. so many women that need you. <laughs> Amy, you know. <laughs> yeah. In a really good thing. And, yeah. Um, yeah, what has so, been your journey like, Sheila? Like, how did you get to your idea? You had originally wanted to start with your husband, but now you're gaining, you know, the courage to do it on your own now. Um, how did you get to that idea? And how how did you think that even though you've been, yeah, yes, you've been a lawyer for you know x amount of years, and that you could have just easily said, "I just want to be a law firm," you know. Um, but how did you do more with the idea that you're currently developing? And how do you think? other parts of your personal life or life experience and your professional experience combined together to lead you to this particular idea you're, you're, you're wanting to back the cause of? Um, I, think, I think you guys in the community know that um, I, the services we wanted to provide was actually to help people, employees who uh, are facing termination or redundancy. Um, and we, have been doing this our whole lives 
because of what my husband does as an employment lawyer, we have um, advised family and friends for the longest of time. It's just a natural process for us, you know, um, to like, hey, um, you know, I'm pregnant and I've been given a termination and I've been out on, you know, is there anything I can do? Um, you know, this, this is just a very basic conversation we have. They didn't even think that, you know, there was any help they could get or anything like that. And it was always at the back of our mind that, you know, this is something, or the back of my husband's mind, that is something that, you know, he wanted to pursue, um, you know, as, you know, I call it a side hustle or something out of passion. Um, I never really bonded an idea because I specialize in a very different area, intellectual property. Um, and so this was just something I, a friend or, you know, it was just a family member or someone really in trouble. And, and this is mm. such an emotional thing, you know, because this is someone's job, someone's livelihood. Um, and, you know, and that emotional investment thing that really didn't spear me on. Um, and so my feelings towards this um, actually changed when we relocated. And I was actually in an industry that was very, very, very stressful, very highly politicized. And there were lots and lots of people facing a lot of issues at work. Um, and so that sort of changed my perspective. Um, and I think, uh, it, I remember telling you guys the story of, uh, you know, it was a very close colleague of mine. Um, and she went through literally hell, left the television industry after 20 years. Um, you know, and that sort of just shook me to its core. Um, and I couldn't believe, you know, something like that is happening. We are fighting for, you know, gender equality, for, you know, for diversity and for you know, rights, you know, all of this going on, but, you know, the very basic thing to have an environment that is safe, to have an environment that you can work in, you can thrive in, um, and not get, you know, uh, or get bullied or get uh, because uh, people in control uh, mm. have just taken over from all kinds of levels and people have just no idea how to do and how to take control of their work um, you know and they choose to resign or they choose to you know just find other old uh, without exploring their full potential so this affected me really and I think when I came to Bali and just put all this together I mean it started out yes you know it's just legal services, you know, trying to just, you know, because I, you know, with, with, with my generalist and of course with my husband who has seen it all, um, you know, from the corporate, from the unions, you know, we, we knew we could put something together. But what started out as the legal services you know, evolved into something so much bigger. Um, I mm. think anyone has seen air that really resonated yeah. you know, because you know, it's such an emotional impact um, and having come to you and having heard and have just community I just realized you know people need help pre and post um you mm. know even at the outset before they even get letter you know they already know something is wrong they know they can't get along with their boss they know you know management is seeing a change they know the company is being bought over or smell it you know jv's in the air um, you know, and so there's just so many ways, you know, we just realized that we can help people, not just from a legal point of view, from a very strategic and business view on how to do their job from there on. Um, mm. and, and that just, you know, I mean, it, it just came, it, it just started building up. I mean, I didn't even realize it. I think a little bit, I mean, Hannah is really into it. Like she just realized it's a whole experience. I mean, I just started realizing and I was building it up, you know, in Bali last year that post, uh, you know, do after they actually leave so we, we we secure them we bring them in we handhold them we make sure that they can actually do the job while going through this crisis of leaving the company oh. but also prepare them for the aftermath you know because those were the questions that that movie addressed you know what on earth am i supposed to do you know josh Clooney saying you know you're you're a damn good cook you know why didn't you look into that you know but it's not that easy you know 20 years 15 years in the industry you I mean, you can't even fend them doing that thing, you know. Yes, it's passion, but how am I going to make money? How am I going to buy groceries for my kids? Um, you know, yeah. so it, it's that thought, you know, and also in Asia, taboo thing. You know, it's such a taboo thing to even, you know, not do the thing that you learned in university. You know, how do you change that mindset? So I think it was that really, you know, as we ourselves are pivoting into careers that are different and, you know, and doing multiple things, you know, um, you know, that idea really resonated and, um, you know, it's 
thoughts with what we know as our expertise, as our you know, professional expertise and building something for the future. Um, you know, so that, that thing just here yeah, as, I, as I put it up and as I spoke about it to, you know, 20 people, I mean, it, it, you know, to the retreat members whom I just met. Um, the second part to it is the realization and the awareness part, which, you know, from my, from my viewpoint, wearing the lawyer's cap, I just had no idea that people didn't even know what a show cause letter was or what a cause of action is, what a disciplinary proceeding is, you know, I, All the legal I just targets. presume, yeah, you know, because I just presume that people knew that people worked in a corporate environment, they from this reviews are, they know what getting bonuses, you know, and if you don't hit your bonus, what it means, um, you know, and so I just presumed everybody knew it, but it was it, you know, with people from different capacities and different professionals and vocations, I just realized the awareness part is going to be really crucial to do something like this because no, they need to see lawyers when the shit hits the fan, when they want to take somebody to court. That is the general, uh, that is the general awareness. In uh, so this is really going really into the niche. You don't need to see a lawyer yet. How do you come to see us? How do you get that bravery? Or that awareness that you can actually have a safe environment to come to and know that we can actually help you out with something that's so confidential and that's so private that you can't even talk about it because you patient and your goodwill um you know that that is that is ongoing so you you can talk to your spouse you can talk to your family mm -hmm. but you can't talk to your network and to people that can actually you know um destroy you or you know uh, damage your reputation because hey uh, you know you're being faced out company um, so that's a very sensitive topic. So I think that was the biggest thing for me in, you know, when I left Bali um, and I wanted to, 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 of course, you know, do create my milestones. So this resonated, even when it came to a stop, when, you know, personally, of course, you know, when I couldn't do it any longer because I just wanted to push it aside and, you know, heal and, you know, go through this problem, just crash in Singapore doing this. Um, the bravery to start this conversation again um, happened eight months ago. I was in a session with uh, this, this book called Connected Women, and we were supposed to go and pitch, you know, what we were doing, um, you know. And I told myself I'm going to do it, you know, because I felt that was an environment um, that I could just kick start this conversation again, and I did it. And you wouldn't believe the conversations after that. People coming to me and asking me about this and... That was my that was my Bali. That was my second moment, just coming out and talking about this, and again mm -hmm. validating that people just didn't know that they had an right. avenue. You know? Because you don't have many lawyers who work for the employees. You don't have many that mm -hmm. companies who work for the companies. So people, so this is going to be quite uh, an interesting challenge to get the awareness out there, which I think uh, you know you and of course the retreat team members had already raised. Um, that the second was who do I want to work with and I think this sort of overlaps with Heather you know like she knew who she wanted to work with then she found out who to work with you know do you want to do work and all that but who do you want to work with right so we were exposed to so much high level senior management you know in terms of being redundant or being terminated um, you know and these are people who actually have the capacity to take the companies to court um, you know so we were that sort of the thing how do we then work with the with the other sort of, you know, employees who are just starting out mm. and, and all of that, because that's where the ignorance is. That's where capacity is um, in that sense of it. You know, how do we get them in? How do we talk to them? How do we make them aware? How can we for them? Because, you know, probably won't even have much to, to get that sort of um, high level strategic advisory that we are thinking in our heads, you know. So just just sorting that out, I found it helpful, you know, in this few literally this few uh, months that I've just restarted back this conversation is just to keep having that conversations. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and surprise, surprise, um, there is that group that really needs just that, you know, what is really a show cost letter? What is really, you know, when things go bad, when you go along with your bosses, that's that conversation. And I also have been having those conversations with people at high levels. Um, so that's another complex area because these people working in such a high level, um, they confidentially is key, reputation is key, um, and they can't afford to, you know, people helping them match it, but they do. You know, so the pain points, I remember at Bali, um, you talked about the pain points, uh, give oh. them the pain points, show them the pain points and why they 
I remember that part very clearly. Yeah. Um, you give them what they want and show them what they need. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I always get the opposite way. Yeah, and 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 I was given a live scenario, you know, by by you know, this was my validation. Someone who was in the industry, but this is the banking industry. You know, the banking industry is a very close knit, very very close own procedures because it's a regulated industry. Um, if you you are asked, you know, if you have got like an insider trading fraud or something, it's a very very uh, regulated thing. You know, and mm. even going to that part, you know, I I wouldn't have the total expertise, but I I, I know enough to know that. You know, they, they, they don't even have someone representing them when they're doing this inside the company. You know, you're not even talking about anything else. So, and, and it's so confidential. It's like, you know, and they're doing it on their own, you know, and, and this was interesting because the lawyer was yeah. telling that. Yeah. And the person she was talking about, you know, and she's like, yeah, and we all just didn't want to be connected with this person because he was going through this. He didn't have anyone working with the company lawyers who, are, of course, represented the company. And we just couldn't even put a foot in because our reputation then would be, you know, we know he's being, but always two sides to the story. And I was thinking, well, you know, these are the people that we potentially, you know, help and be our clients. And, but how do we get to them uh, in, you know, getting them to have, we can build the services, you know? So, yeah. so Lydia, you know, it's still all very, still aware um, with, I think the two things. And as I go into this, um, you know, I, I think the validation is there. I think we've spoken to enough people to know that there is capacity Ooh. for people after services. But I think the question for us now is, the thing is, who do we work with? And in these two very different levels, how do we create awareness and trust, you know, um, I think. And I, and I really think with, you know, what um, Heather said, it's just to keep the conversations going and to collect data and Absolutely. just to map it yeah, out, yeah. you know. Um, coming from here, coming from there, coming from, how do we get this going? We really need to keep that conversations going. Um, it's also tricky because, you know, we are also doing, uh, as you know, heavily invested in, in our day-to-day -day jobs. Um, mm -hmm. And so how do we map this to? But I believe, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, we're going to find a way to get these conversations going, you know, because the dots will connect. Um, yes. And, Yes, yeah. always connect. I mean, um, you know, you know. I think, I think the great the thing great about thing hearing about the stories from, stories from Heather, and even what you're working on, Sheila, is that the bigger insight here is about starting better conversations. You know, and actually, a lot, you have conversations you will start differently when you're first developing your business because this is the market research piece, right? What do these people need? What is really behind their concerns? What is support that they need to, to keep going? You know, how can we serve them? And then as you know more about that and you do develop a theme around, you know, how you market, what content you put out there, how you, as you talked about, Sheila, you, you called it awareness. You know, I called it an education. You, you need to educate people that you exist. You need to educate people that these problems they have, there's something behind it that they can be doing that isn't as obvious to them. Uh, it's an education of there's another way that you can be looking at this differently. And that is actually what your content is all about. It's not just sales, it's really about education through your marketing. Uh, and then, so then you'll be having a very separate format of conversations at that time. So that's where you're at, Sheila, is organizing potentially more sort of private workshops, private discussions uh, where people can attend to, to talk about these, these things in a safe place. So there's not less about market research, but more about community building at this point, right? Showing up for your clients physically in Singapore or Malaysia, or maybe a webinar like this, you know, where the, the right people that are having some problems around this, this issue are coming together and sharing what's going on and having camaraderie. As you say, it's a very lonely place when, you, when you've been accused of something at work or you're having legal things that you have to fight through at work. You ain't talking to your colleagues. You know, you ain't talking to your, to your family because it's embarrassing. Yeah. You know, so you sort of need to be in an area where there's a mentor that has a lawyer background, but also people that are potentially suffering with the same problem, right? You know, which is why we're all here, right? We all have similar values, similar approaches of what we want to do things, and we have the same problems, you know? So there's a camaraderie feeling in that tribe, and I think uh, uh, absolutely that's, that's going to be helpful for you going forward. And Heather's right, what she said in the chat box, you need to have the conversation. So many people distract themselves with other activities in their business, on their website, social media brand. They think they have to get like all the journeys of their mapping of their business model put down mm. packed. But actually, the bigger piece is actually you don't know enough about your work. You don't know enough about your customer because it's not about you. Their business is not about you. The business is about the people you serve. 
So if you're feeling stuck a lot of the times in a business as how do I, you know, make sure my business is, is the thing I want to do is very likely because you're not having enough conversations. So find those people, ask people if they know anyone that fits the profile, get into the Facebook groups and ask people, maybe you probably already know if you go down your Facebook list of friends, I guarantee you, you will find three to five people that are potential people you can invite on a conversation. And those are so much more an effective activity than trying to beautify your brand on your website because nobody's going to come and hire you anyway just because your pictures look awesome and fancy. You know, people care about what you have to say. People care about how you help. And it's in the helping of giving that value that you're then going to receive the value of money. You know, so we talked about beta testing as a way to do that, market research and real conversations, and then starting better conversations as your way of marketing rather than just having snazzy images that are shareable, right? That isn't going to do very much. More shares and more likes doesn't always equal more customers. Uh, thank you, ladies, for that really insightful conversation around how you develop your, your idea and how the multi-passionate you know, um, idea of like bring more of you into your business rather than just one of two things, but you're really thinking about it more generally. What's the bigger message around your work? What's the overarching theme? that you're really representing in your work that isn't always tied to just one business. It could be multiple projects you may end up putting out there, but knowing this overarching theme of how you help, why you help, what you know is important to help with at this moment in time in your life, is gonna get things going, uh, which is really important. Now I'm really mindful of time and I wanna make sure that people have chances for a Q and A. So we're gonna do a bit of a rapid fire round. Okay, so this means quick answers from all of you girls on instinctive answers that are gonna come on board. There's, there's three more questions I wanna ask uh, that's related to this topic. And then as we're doing that, uh, you guys that are here listening still at the live stream or um, uh, watching now is click on the ask a question tab and start to ask questions so that we can actually answer them. There's a few questions I already have from email uh, that will come in, but if you guys are here, you have a burning question you want us answer answer for your particular situation that we can help you with, please do that now at the Ask a Question tab. Okay, rapid fire round, ladies. The question I have is, what did you have to reframe your mindset on to pursue life as an entrepreneur? What did you have to reframe in the way you think, how you look at things in order to keep going as an entrepreneur? Amy, what have you learned? Well, my thought was I never wanted to be an entrepreneur because <laughs> it scared the shit out of me. Right. <laughs> So now I have to reframe, um, you know, what does being an entrepreneur mean? And, and, you know, really it is, I get to define what I want to do. So, and in my job for the last four or five years, you know, working for my father has been um, a little somewhat unguided. So I've basically been um, somewhat of an entrepreneur as a department of one within our companies, you know, um, self-directing myself and making sure projects get done. So, I've been doing it for a while. Mm. Yeah, you didn't even realize you were actually doing it. Mm -mm. <laughs> because you've made up this sort of fantasy of what a real entrepreneur looks like, you know, that can be, yeah. you know, you're not a Gary Vaynerchuk. You're not, you know, it doesn't have to be that full blown, right? You can define what that looks like. You could be solopreneurship, could be freelancing, could be consulting. There's so many ways, right, to have a mm -hmm. business. It doesn't have to be a full blown business. Awesome, Amy. Yeah. Heather, what have you learned? What if you had to reshift in your mindset uh, to keep pursuing your life as an entrepreneur? Uh, that there's no wrong answers. Uh, so if something you try something and it doesn't work, it actually is a right answer because it's given you an answer to something that's maybe isn't the right way. So you can pivot into another direction. Mm. Um, and that exploration is freedom. So when you, when you work in a corporate environment, you're not allowed to ask questions or change things. So you have the absolute freedom as your own boss to be able to say, I'm going to try this and see how it works. And if it doesn't work great. And if it works great. Yeah, absolutely. And make and be, it be and, and actually look at failure differently, right? Allow yourself to make those mistakes and that there's insight in errors and mistakes. That's actually part and parcel of the process and not to make it mean something negative, you know? And that exactly. really changes the lens, right? How you look at it. Yeah, yeah. There's no such thing really as failure. It's just one way that didn't work. Yeah, one way to do it better for you the next time. That's right. Yeah, That's right. Totally true. Um, Sheila, what about you? What has been your mindset that you've had to reframe to keep going on in your business and business development process? I think the first thing is to internally level where I no longer identify myself, you know, that I'm going to be a lawyer for the rest of my life. Um, and this is what I'm going to be doing. I think that internal identity is so important because, you know, yes, I'm doing this, but, you know, when things don't go well, you know, I just go back doing so mm. that is really hard you know having that 
that realization at the highest level, um, you know, because when you have that, Germany's Bali, Singapore, wherever you are, you'll be able to do the things that you've set out to do and not run back to what you used to know how to do because that's where you think your identity lies, you know. So I had to just get myself to that place. And also because this was sort of a co-vent, I had to be able to come to the realization that I need to take care of things on my own, like, you know, my own well-being, uh, you know, in that sense of it, because I, I try accountability. I always need that to do things. And so I've had to pivot from that and be accountable to myself and also be intelligent enough to have, you know, people that can impact on me and, and create because I know I try from that. Um, so mm. I think, you know, coming back to this eight months later, uh, I, I, I can set up systems that are intelligent enough to know, you know, what would work for me and, you know, and uh, the reliance on, you know, co-partner or something. It's not the game, you know, that, that I got this and I am, I have built systems around it intelligent enough to know that, you know, I will be accountable to myself for things. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I love that. And also in a way, you know, as as you were, um, you know, the whole identity, like that's something we get stuck on, isn't it? It's like, especially when you've been doing it for 10, 15, 20 years, that's all you have said is your identity. When you go to a dinner party, you're like, what do you do? I'm a lawyer, I'm this. And it's like very much indented into our uh, uh, psychology that this is who I am. And it's hard to think beyond what that looks like. But even in your business idea right now, Sheila, because I know a lot of, of your big passion that's beyond lawy lawyering uh, is people, right? And having uh, emotional support for people. I mean, you are the case study in a way because you took a, a two year sabbatical and you went to like every Tony Robbins conference, you've done Mind Valley. you know, you're, you're huge yeah. into personal development. And y do you have to be a personal development coach? No, but what was really great is that you combined that passion of self-development into your skill set of lawyering and actually creating a, an even better product because most of the time when people think of lawyers, they don't think about, um, you know, uh, emotional support as much. It's all legal. It's all, you know, fine print. It's very formal. And you're changing. And in a way, um, you are, you are uh, impacting how lawyers now interact with people emotionally. You know, that mm -hmm. is allowing you to creatively be adding more services. So you're not just going to go, hey, we're going to help you not, not get sued or whatever, get into find, uh, uh, legal trouble at work. But we also know how you're feeling right now. We're also knowing that the support you need is not just the formalized, you know, us going to court for you or recommending a lawyer, whatever those things that are needing to be, to be done. We're also considering your well-being, right, in the mix of it. So you might actually be having like, you know, counselors as part of the mix of the service. You could be actually having like, you know, as you said, the pre and post experience where you're taking care of them you know, even after they've done, uh, you know, worked with you in order to get uh, to get okay, in the OK side of the legal matters they're handling, you're, you're giving a shit about their emotional support that other lawyers will not be doing, you know, and that immediately makes you different from someone else immediately makes you a much holistic practice to come to uh, why they would pick you over some very like jargony lawyer that doesn't actually really care about them, but care about making you know, that sale, right? Or just going to court for them, right? So you're infusing the humanness of your interests and passions with people into the way you conduct business, which I think is so awesome as you, and that's part of what we're talking about, right? Mixing in multi, multiple passions yeah. into one idea to do more with your customers, which is really awesome. Great, ladies. All right, another question before we go into Q&A is, um, I know that a lot of new entrepreneurs is really easy as you a lot of people is doing anything new for the first time. It's really easy to check out before you're ready. You should be checking out, right? How many times the first self doubt that comes into play, the first obstacle we start to see we're like, Oh my God, we're not supposed to be doing it. Okay. Goodbye. You know, and, and that's the biggest mistake most people make. And actually the reason why most people cannot get anywhere, not from lack of intelligence or ideas or creativity. And it's actually sometimes the, the least smartest people that get somewhere because they have actually developed a way or a muscle to keep going despite the obstacles. And that's what actually is the difference between a successful entrepreneur and another. So I want to know, as you guys have been going through different obstacles, right? You know, uh, a lot of you have different circumstances and these obstacles come in different uh, ways and stories. What has been sort of your, um, if you had to share one thing that you've had to uh, uh, know more about or get help with or whatever it might be, what is that one thing that keeps you going when the going gets tough, right? And, and, and how have you 
uh, what have you been able to do to keep your eyes on the prize, even if life distracts you or you feel, you know, like you have to, to commit to something else right now? How do you keep focusing on developing your business despite all these different things that can happen to you in terms of obstacles or distractions? Uh, Amy, what's your one thing, your go-to thing to keep going? Um, I, I'd say it's just a, it's just this feeling I have that I really want to do this and I want to have something that's my own, mm. um, that I've, that I've created. And I, you know, I, both my dad and my stepdad, um, have built their own businesses. So I kind of come from, you know, it's possible. Um, and so, yeah, for me, I think though, definitely having the struggle, you know, um, Cal asked how I'm doing this with a full-time job and I'm not actually doing it right now because of the full-time job and other commitments that I have, um, but I'm trying to, you know, reframe it so that, okay, well, if I can't, you know, if I don't get to run an adventure this, this year or this, uh, the summer, maybe I do it in the fall. Like, how can I still say it's like, I'm, you know, I'm not looking at it as a failure yet. It's not that I've given up. It's that I'm, um, adjusting mm. to, to my circumstances. So yeah, I think that's more of it as I'm not, I'm trying not to be too hard on myself. I, I am where I am and I can do what I can do right now. And then, and then it'll work out when, when I get the time. Yeah, not being hard on yourself and keep going in the capacity that you can, right? And, and, and sometimes it's timing because if you have a new role in your, in your work right now that is gonna take up a lot of your time, you know? But it's, it's about preparing your environment to be ready for it when actually timing can be better um, and, and maybe doing something small around it, right? For now um, and, and be in the vicinity of the business but not actually go full, full, full on, right, with it because there's other commitments in your life at the moment. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to um, I'm going to go hike Kilimanjaro in May with a friend. Mm. So um, I'll be sharing my adventure in the meantime before I can lead other people on their adventures. Yeah, absolutely. Heather, what about you? What's the one thing that you you have tried to rely on rely on to keep you going when the going gets tough? Um, I think it's similar to Amy. It's just kind of this feeling of like it's possible, and I will have no one to blame but myself if I don't give it an honest go. I'm kind of in the mindset now where something will work and I know it will, and I know I'll be successful at that, at it. It's just um, the time. I'm an impatient person. I want results immediately. And, um, you know, in this day and age of, of overnight successes on social media and, you know, TV and stuff, we think that, you know, we miss the work that people put into it. And I think being comfortable with the fact that it's going to take work and, I have to put in that work and I have to decide how that's going to look for myself. So it's become a real self, a self, um, I guess, reliance thing or belief, self-belief thing, I think yeah. probably. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sheila, what about you? What's your one thing that you think um, you, you, you develop or you rely on to keep you going when things get tough or, or setbacks happen in, in your life and your, and your work? Um, I think for me, there's two things. So the first thing was having a complete break for, a com you know, as you said, for a complete transformation to happen. So yes, I was in Bali. I was, you know, I, I put something up and we had, we had a good, we had a good scent, but it didn't really work, you know, and then came a complete breakdown. And so, I mean, I, I think I'm a true believer for, you know, to have a transformation. You, mm. you need to have a complete breakdown in you know, a money body mind and soul and and i went for a you know and so i i knew deep down i needed to take charge of this i needed to take charge um you know as have said you're responsible for yourself i needed i need i need to own that you know and i didn't own it for the longest of time um you know because everything was structured everything was just you know handed down to me and so you know i had to have this eight months i had to have a complete breakthrough in it and I attended a business, uh, session you know how to deal with stress anxiety take care of your well-being and I think that really just pivoted me and gave me that confidence the second the breakdown the transformation the second part that helped me push me was to get validation I for the first mm. time I actually had a very holistic conversation my sabbatical with uh, Tom Dick and Harry within my network within the entrepreneur network within friends within you know, people of patience, full and frank disclosure of what my sabbatical has been and what I am doing. And that's how you know, I started, you know, um, I'm heavily involved in leading Carol Visit Singapore. 
I started talking to the women, you know, I put my profile up. I said that I'm doing a sabbatical, I'm doing a venture. I went to Bali and this is what I'm building. And, you know, I'm still very much, um, you know, doing project-based work for my legal work because, you know, uh, I, I still love it. Uh, I'm trying to find the future of work that works for me. You know, I mean, I work for mm. everything, for me and my family. And I put that out, you know, and you know, I don't do much social media, you know, and I put that out for me, for me. So that was my big first step. And as I went back for interviews, I proudly held that narrative. And this is what I've been doing. Oh. And this is what I'm going to do. And this is what I'm building. And, you know, validation is very important for me. And, you know, I told you I went for an interview with, and I told them that that was my biggest fear. I'm like, oh my God. How can I even tell these people this is what I'm doing, you know, without sounding like I've just pivoted way off my professional capacity. I told them, I told them and, you know, I, it felt so good because the conversations that came out of it was just, you know, they were just in awe, like, you know, you're very, what you do this is what we want to teach people, the young people, you know, that it's okay to pivot. It's okay to build something from what you already know. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really good. It you know, like everybody, you know, has said, it's just that feeling that came back uh, and that, you know, and as I started being braver and getting that validation. So, you know, those were my key take on points up till now. Mm. Excellent. Um, I'm going to go into some questions here before we start to um, end our webinar today. And Cal, I know that uh, Amy answered some of Cal's questions here, which was one of the questions on the tab, but I also wanted to help answer um, what's also another question that I'm going to rephrase from Cal's question, uh, because I think uh, uh, there is a big topic around, you know, how do you organize your time? What has worked for people in terms of keeping focus while they're working full time on uh, a particular puzzle pieces of their business building uh, journey? Um, Maybe that's what we can actually just uh, just quickly, whoever wants to answer this question is like, when you've had a full-time job or if you're in a full-time job, how have you um, committed to, what, do you, what conditions do you set for yourself in terms of your time management, your rituals, your routine or support systems or accountability uh, that has helped you to, uh, to still keep working on your business uh, whilst you're still in, full, in a full-time uh, job? Anyone has any tips or strategies to share with Cal? before I give my two cents? <laughs> uh, I can, I can, I'm not in full-time work now, but when I was, I think one of the um, probably mistakes that I actually made was having too high of expectations about the amount of work I could do each week on my side business and what I was expecting of myself. So I had to um, reframe, I guess, what was you know, sensible to, to be able to put in in a week um, for the business. Um, where I wasn't prepared to be, you know, kind of staying up all night working on it. So I had to kind of set, you know, particular tasks through the week. And even if it wasn't a lot, it was still something mm. and the consistency was the key. Yeah, I love that. And you're so right. I think the over expectation is what makes us disappointed. And we want it with yeah. gung ho in the beginning of time, but we know that change and discipline takes time, right? So yeah. I always give an advice, um, Cal, as well, that if you want to continue to persevere and, and sort of like slowly, slowly build your business, but you have to decide actually how the more time you spend in your business, the more you're going to get out of it, right? And that's the, uh, that's just logical. So yes, we have priorities. We've got jobs, we've got family, we've got certain things that might take higher priority at this point in our life. And I think it's okay to honestly admit that, but then sort of go, okay, what time could I have left? What am I willing to exchange in my weekly schedule? Maybe it's the going out, uh, you know, on the weekends or exchanging a time block that actually uh, is less important to me now than the, 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 the perseverance to actually go after my business and make this happen for me uh, by the end of the year. So sometimes even choosing just one block of time where there's two hours or three hours a week on one day only, because that's sort of the only feasible thing, it's much more likely for you to consistently succeed in making sure that happens for you every single week rather than trying to pile up, right, three to four days and actually not make all of that because it's way too big of a jump for you right now. So I think that's in alignment with what Heather has sort of mentioned. Um, and at the end of the day, we sometimes just have to do this thing, what we have to decide to decide. Okay. So stop feeling sorry for yourself. If you do, are indeed not going to spend time in your business and that's fine because you make the decision, you know why you made it. I got to spend time with my husband this year. It's got to happen. Or I've got this job that I wouldn't really want to pursue that I'm learning something from I'm excited about. I just want to put this on pause for a minute, but as long as you know why you're making those decisions then there's no way, you can sort of regret that decision, 
right? But if there is regret there, then that might tell you an indicator that actually I kind of want to do both. I need to find the time, right? I need to actually work after, after hours. I need to wake up two hours early before work because you know what? I need to do it. And so what am I, you know, there's no better time to do it than today, but what's one small move I can make in order for me to pursue this thing and keep my objectives and priorities in my life uh, still in gear, right? We do have to decide to decide and none of us um, are going to do it unless we know why, right? What's really motivating us to take that block of time to wake up earlier, to say no to wine and cheese night with the ladies this, this week, because I've got to trade that time for something else, right? So choosing to choose, I think is also a really great thing to do. Excellent. Um, okay, one more question from someone who emailed this to me, which I think is a great uh, uh, thing that we all have experienced whenever, well, that was really passionate. <laughs> Uh, and gesturing, um, that we all feel like we're doing anything different from the identity that other people know us about. Uh, so Wendy emailed me and said, I would love to ask the ladies the question of how do you deal with judgment or potential judgment from yourself or other anticipated judgment we think will happen with family when we start revealing that potentially what we want to work on isn't what they've known us for uh, or potentially um, what they think is even the right thing for us to do. How have you guys, very quickly, a little bit of a lightning round again, uh, how have you dealt with self-judgment, judgment of others, and how have you overcome some of that to move forward uh, with telling more people what, what you want to do? Um, Amy, what, what has happened for you there? Well, it's funny, just the, the topic of um, getting up early or making other time, I was just thinking about how much guilt I have around, <laughs> well, if I can get up early and work on my own business, why am I not going into work and working more at my nine to five job mm. right like that's I just thought in my head like oh well if I get up two hours early I should just go into my office right and get more work done so it's yeah it's a big deal I think for me I know my dad would support me but I think there's still a lot of pressure because you know I work with my father and um you know to carry on the family business but um I know that there's no pressure when I told my mom about my idea there was some comment about well you know it's not really a real job or something like that. So, and I'm just like, well, how, how is it not real? <laughs> so I think everyone will come around, but yeah, I'm, I'm a fairly, I like to talk things out. So I just kind of blurt stuff out all the time. And, and then people say something and then I go, oh yeah, maybe this is not a great idea. And then I do start. So then it goes into my head, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably the opposite of a lot of people where I don't necessarily shy away from saying stuff because a lot of times things leave my mouth before they've really broke <laughs> my brain. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, like, I just kind of say stuff, and then oh, right, I should think about that more, or I don't really care what you think now because I've said it and I'm really keen on it. So, yeah, yeah, got that for sure. And and I think sometimes talking it out, even if you get, I mean, what people say to us is such. I mean, I used to be very sensitive about because my mom said the same thing. When are you gonna come back to real life and stop holidaying? you know, in the world. So I'm like, do you even know what I do? Uh, she has no idea, right? She still thinks I'm on vacation in some way. Uh, and, and, you know, she comes from a different generation. She doesn't, got, she's like, what do you mean you're on the internet? You're in some MLM scheme or something, you know, and she just doesn't get it, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, people project their own beliefs, right? They have to talk it out that way with you because in a way it validates their own experience. So I've had friends who actually were absolutely depressed as a job and, and cannot leave because they just bought a new house. So they felt the need to warn me that I'm making a huge mistake because I just also bought a new house. But really what they're actually doing behind the words is they're just expressing what they think they have to say to themselves in order to keep staying at their job and that they've made the right decision. They're not actually thinking about my circumstance. And this is a subconscious thing that I think people do, which cannot be taken personally because what they say is always a reflection about them, not about you at the end of the day, right? Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. Heather, what's that been like for you? Uh, yeah, tough. I've had a few tough experiences. Um, I think it's similar to like Lydia. I think I, I, I can be a very sensitive person. And especially when you're, you know, like Amy, you're really excited about something and you tell someone, they go, well, I don't get it. Like, what do you mean? Like, what does that even, you know? And you're like, oh, like, you know, you kind of assume everyone's going to share the same level of, of excitement as you do. Right. Uh, and I think there was an element of, um, you know, as an entrepreneur and as starting a business, you don't have all the answers straight away. And you're not used to that when you start having conversations with people. So when people would ask me questions and I go, well, I, oh, I don't know. I don't know how I'll do that. Or I, I don't know. And they go, well, what do you mean you don't know? Well, then how are you gonna make this work? And it's like, <gasps> and then you start panicking and then all this stuff, you know? So I actually had to learn how to limit conversations. I've stopped talking um, with certain 
I've not stopped talking altogether, right. but stopped talking about it with particular people. And I've had to make sure that the conversations I've had are with um, the like-minded people and people that I've found through Lydia and in our group academy and stuff, you know, cause they get it. And even if they don't have, even if they don't necessarily agree with it or don't really get it, they're not going to judge in the same way. They're just going to be supportive and ask questions and, you know, say, what can I help you with kind of thing. So um, mine, what I, I, like Lydia too, I had to, I had to, it's still a work in process, but I have to remember it's, uh, that's their stuff. It's not about me. And so when I say something, I have to be comfortable with the fact that people aren't going to get it. They're not going to like it. They're going to be judgy. They're going to be negative possibly. And if I'm comfortable with what I'm doing myself, then that has to be enough for me to continue to move forward with it. Yeah, absolutely. And and you're so right about you have to believe in yourself first before you can actually yeah. articulate that. So sometimes just knowing who not to talk to before you get that right is great and talk to the right people who actually don't believe you're nuts for pursuing your dream and very likely you yeah. will have the same value of that. They're doing the same thing. And that, that's right. very different yeah. feedback you're going to get there for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sheila, um, what about you in terms of how have you dealt with um, judgment of self and judgment of others to continue pursuing things, even if your business isn't actually what's on your resume? For me, it was, for it, me was very, it was very easy. I just did a MIA, did a MIA completely MIA. because I didn't even know what I was going to do. Know. <laughs> so I just could ask me, you know, as you know, I just immerse myself in people's lives. You know, I kickstart their question. I immerse myself in their stories. Um, you know, but for family and friends, especially family, I mean, I don't think they've, you know, as you know, culturally, I, you know, I've been the, the fact, you know, I'll make a decision, I'll do it myself, you know, and so I've ruled that way. Uh, my parents, you know, they know I'm a lawyer, but they don't really know exactly what I do. Uh, you know, so it's always been that and, and they know, you know, I will, you know, I'll be fine, you know, I'm yeah. wrong. Um, you know, then comes your extended family, if it's your spouse and all that. So that's a different story, you know, the, the, the support you need from your spouse, uh, that's a different level of it. But just family, it's tough. It was ex-bosses, you know, ex-leagues, it's a whole pool of people. So you got to do it intelligently. Until you're ready to have that conversation, don't have that conversation. Talk about everything else, talk about their Ooh. lives, people love talking about themselves, just do it. Yeah. And just, you know, you've got to be smart enough and say, hey, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm at that one liner. And the conversations I have now is because I now know what I want to do and how I want to do it. And you know that validation was of course important, and people with similar, similar mindsets and outlook will get it. You know because we all are now building a new future. It's very tech. Actually, Singapore. I mean, super tech friendly. People are pivoting. Kids are dropping off college. So it's a conversation that is starting to happen, uh, and and we want to have this because you know you want to be able to tell your kid that this is what you did and this is okay to do it. And I think mm. right now my awareness is I need to have this conversation. And make people uh, mentor young, you know, lean and I mentor young women. I need to push their boundaries. I so this is my first step being brave enough to tell it because now there's women and I need to tell them, look, it's okay to do this, but you need to be smart about it. You need to be smart about it financially. And do this and ask money from the parent. Rebel, you know, because of course we all want to know that they're doing well, and doing well means they are financially secure. So that's that very, very taboo topic, you know. I, doing this or are you going to come and in my house you know two years later still building your startup <laughs> you know that that's the topic people don't talk about you know but yeah. the topic as they say you know it, as as Asian and had us in social media is all the success stories you know um and so there's those very real topics that need to be taken but you need to be okay with yourself as before you can yeah. talk so about very true the stories and all of yeah. that yeah yeah. yeah, and I think understand. We talked about why a lot today. It's like when you know why you're pursuing something, no matter if it's completely logical mm. to someone else, it doesn't matter. They're not living your life. They don't want what you want. It doesn't matter what they think. What matters is what you think. And so, if you're a bit shaky whenever you hear someone say, like sort of trump your idea or sort of like rain on your parade, that's very likely a clue that you yourself haven't got good with, you know, the confidence you need. Not not just the confidence, but actually understanding why you really truly want to do this. What the opportunity cost for you not doing it. You know, and what truly is going to happen as a benefit to other parts of your life if you were to do this thing. Not every single purpose of doing a business is always just about business and making money. It could be about the freedom of expression. It could be about the fact that you want to have more travel in your life. It could be the fact that actually I don't want to die, uh, you know, knowing that I didn't do something that I want to do on my own and, and, and have that 
you know, to, to think about when I, when I kick the bucket. I just want to have my voice heard in some way. I want to be a creator. That is a really great motivator. And it's so true. Like it keeps us motivated to keep pushing forward when we can come back to the reason why we're doing all these things and why on a whole at a general part of our life, we can um, benefit and get value from doing this one move for ourselves. Excellent. Uh, we're going to answer quickly. Felicia's question uh, is for Amy, actually. So uh, Amy, Amy can answer this. So Amy, uh, Felicia asks, um, as someone uh, providing what she imagines to be quite an unusual service, how do you go about defining and packaging yourself? Great question. Yeah, it is. And I think that it, one of the kind of concerns I have is that people will think I'm just a, an activity provider. Right. Because I, like you said, Lydia, I'm not going to be the one coaching the skills. I'm just the facilitator to get, or the curator to get everyone together and then get everyone there. And so, yeah, it is kind of like really being clear on my messaging. And it is more about, um, instead of talking about the specific activities, is more about using, um, you know, using challenges and using, um, uh, events that push you out of your comfort zone to to broaden your horizons and and connect with new people so it's it's yeah it's just really about crafting the story and I think that that's something that you know we worked on in the in the retreat which was great and I still think I need to kind of really hone in mm. on on that messaging um and it's yeah so it is it's definitely a, a worry Felicia that um or Felicia that I will come across as like, oh, this is just a girl running paddleboarding camps, or this is a girl running mountain biking camps, and wow, this girl does everything. And it's like, well, I don't actually, you know, I'm I'm not a coach in any of them. But, um, and then standing out in a in an area where it is a lot of activities. So I think that's the unique part about what I want to offer is that um, I'm offering it to people who potentially have never ever done these things and have no equipment and have no skills mm. and have no connection to the coaches. So that's kind of my big differentiator is I'm targeting a group of people who aren't actually really being targeted by the activity providers. Right Amazing. Now. I love that answer. Uh, and, and again, it's about choosing your role, right? That you play in this business uh, idea and talking more beyond the obvious thing they're coming for. Right. That's the bigger messaging. That's the bigger ripple effect. That's like the overarching theme that we talked about today is stop looking at your business so directly as like you get a website, you get a VA, you get a lawyer, you know, like you get an adventure today. Like I know they're getting that. They know that. But it's like, but why? Why should they come? Why this adventure and not another? What other parts of the experience are you going to give me? You know, the idea of connecting to other souls like that, you know, being brave to do it with other women when they're also beginners. I mean, that is part of the experience. That's part of the quality of your experience that is beyond like just the activity itself, which I think is so mm -hmm. interesting. And you mentioned telling a story. I mean, this is the part that a lot of people miss when they think about their brand. They think about pictures and colors and snazzy marketing. They don't think about story. And story is one of the most important things that connects another human to another human. We either resonate or we don't, right? That's how we connect. We're born to connect in that way. And we, for the dawn of day of humankind, the only way we have actually uh, educated other people or passed on ancestry history, right? With, with uh, our tribe is through story, right? All the time through myths, story, whatever, you know? And so building a story, uh, talking about more concepts beyond the obvious thing you sell is what is going to attract the right people that believe in those values and using the activities that you're providing as just a weapon for today, this tool for today. Another time you might have a completely different uh, tool that you bring them through, you know, to get through bravery and courage. And then it won't even seem like you, you, you tap into a different industry. It's just actually it's the same thing, except I'm offering this way now. So, you know, you can actually change and pivot in your business by actually relying on your bigger message, relying on this bigger theme so that if you do change components of your, uh, of your business later on, it's not any more activities. It's more, let's like say you want to do self, self-help coaching. You haven't really branched somewhere different. You're just doing it in a different delivery, right? Yeah. Which I think is really awesome. Yeah. And I think that the, I did a survey of, of people through my network um, and the three things that these women were saying, because I said, what, you know, what stops you from trying something new? And they basically, most of them said time or money or having, you know, no one to go with. Mm. And so I'm kind of 
hoping that I, my packages will solve all three. Exactly. Things, so. And the power of asking again, right. And, 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 and a sleuthing for the problems is so, is so, is so exciting. Mm-hmm. Love that, Amy. That's a great question, Felicia. And funny enough, I know, I know Elisa, uh, Felicia because she's in my academy as well. And one of the things she didn't realize, again, talking about things that you don't know, what you don't know, is that she didn't actually think, to be honest, that people cared about story <laughs> or like what that looked like, like storytelling, like how, like script writing, you know, and it's still beyond that. It's brand story. You know, it's like this individual voice that sort of comes with um, storytelling that every business, I think, really requires. Okay, so first of all, thank you, ladies, for bringing your um, insights, your experience, your uh, your own story into the mix. Because I think it's so great to hear it from people who are actually in the midst of developing this transition, not just from pe- only people like me, you know, that have done this, you know, five six years later. It's great to to hear what actually is happening at this beginning stage. It isn't always sugar plum and gumdrops, but there's so much insight and learning from this whole thing. Uh, now, obviously, we've said to all of you that these uh, these ladies came from the retreat from last year. We are running a another one April 22nd to the 28th. It is such a powerful event because when you can be physically there with someone, where you wake up thinking about your business and your life, where you don't have distractions about work or kids or washing the dishes or whatever it is that you usually get distracted with and can incubate in a beautiful, gorgeous place like uh, Bali to do so and people that really support you along the way, so much can get done in seven days rather than seven months you can imagine, you know, uh, and a lot of the, the people that and I'm sure you ladies can contest to this is that the people you meet at the retreat are going to be your allies, they are going to be your business buddies, they are going to be your support system. So they know everything about you. Uh, and when we can actually tap into the collective intelligence of other humans to pick a part of idea, our idea to give us feedback to sometimes be the avatar and challenges on how we can look at our business differently. Um, it is a, a growth uh, that can happen there. So if you're interested in the retreat, I talk to everybody. It's a very highly curated event to make sure that everyone is a good fit and are going to contribute well to this event. Uh, do click on the little green button that you see below the Crowdcast video here, and you'll be um, into our um, apply page where you can actually talk to me. Uh, it's a free call. I give you strategies and advice about your situation, whether or not you come to the retreat. So look at it as a free coaching call in a way. Uh, and then if the, the retreat is a good fit and it is going to help you answer some of those questions of what business should I start? How should I develop this model? What do I really need to be uh, working on to make this real for me? And also what I need to adjust in my transition, in my lifestyle, my relationships, in my current nine to five job in order to make this happen. Uh, we can absolutely help you do that when you come to Bali in April. Um, so very quickly so that people can know where to find you as well, ladies, uh, if they want to sort of say hello or thank you for your insights today. Um, could we end this broadcast with, first of all, what is sort of like, if, if you want to talk to people who are interested in the retreat to come and, and, and experience what you've experienced, what is sort of one thing that you got out of it that you think is, was really beneficial for you? Uh, and then let us know how we can also find you in the, wor- the w- World Wide Web. <laughs> uh, Amy, what about we starting with you? Yeah, well, you, you said already the immersion um in the in the space but i think it was the group of people that you put together as well lydia like um yeah i just i connected with everyone so well and i really enjoyed spending time with those people and i thought that everyone had something to offer and and share and it was great to have you know at least nine if you know plus yours plus all the guest speakers that you brought in all their perspectives Mm. on your idea and their kind of insight into what um you know have bring just a fresh set of eyes to your idea I thought it was amazing. And like I said, I went to the retreat with no idea right? Um, <laughs> and, and left with something. And so I felt it was really powerful. Mm. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, and uh, while I'm not super consistent, Heather, maybe I could use your social media. <laughs> There's stuff. a lot of helpful. Oh, it's so- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but you can find me uh, on Facebook or Instagram at Amy Goes Adventures. Amy Goes Adventures. Excellent. Uh, Bettina, can you add that as well as um, Amy's website on the chat box so people can find her and, and actually take a look at the work she's doing? Um, Heather, uh, what about you? What did you get out of the retreat that was beneficial for your journey? And how can people find you right now? I think, I think for me, the retreat was the um, coming together with other like-minded people. I really was struggling with that in my day-to-day life, I guess. And as I was trying to navigate this full-time job with trying to start a side hustle and, you know, people just kind of not getting it, not being able to have the conversations with friends and family that I was hoping I was going to be able to have. So when I came and, and, um, and like Amy said, this is a highly curated event. So everyone that was there was in a, you know, wasn't of a particular mindset, was at a particular 
stage, give or take, you know, not everybody's at the same level or same stage, but um, everybody had something to contribute. Everybody had a unique um, perspective and everybody was very supportive. Everybody was there for the same reason. So it was really um, an expedited um, way to not only kind of power through aspects of your business and developing the business idea and the next steps, but also creating this tribe of people mm. that um, to this day, and you can ask anybody that was there last April, we all still keep in yeah. touch. We all still so message. True. We have a, we have a WhatsApp group. We have, we're always on Facebook together. We're always on, like we're calling each other. We're on Skype together. Mm -hmm. I have private calls with these people all the time. So it was, it was, and I think that was through, um, you know, you can go to lots of events. You can go to lots of things where there's lots of people, but because Lydia really limits it and she really says, she says no to people yeah. like you actually don't necessarily if you apply not everybody gets to come and i think that was the magic of it the secret of the of the intimacy curation yeah. yeah it really was and uh we were joking the other day about how when we all left some of us shed a tear because we really were immersed in this environment it was genuine like mm. and it wasn't um it wasn't oh, too much it wasn't overwhelming it was actually like we got to the seventh day and everybody went no, 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 that's been seven days. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was like the quickest seven days of my life. So um, it's, you know, to this day, I think it was the single best thing I've ever done for myself and invested in and, and took the chance and went. And um, I think it really pushed me into a, another realm. It creates motivation and determination when you leave. And, and then that support continues on afterwards, which is the other great part. It doesn't just end on the seven days with Lydia or with the group. So. Mm it creates a tribe that's ongoing and it's it's really a powerful magical kind of thing actually yeah to sound a bit cheesy, but it is <laughs> yeah, no, it, it was really it is it yeah. was fast but it was also so deep you know because you get to know people really was. so much when you can look at all their shit you know that everyone lays it out yeah. you know there's no more yeah. hiding behind the shit right so we sort of go oh my yeah. god that shit i have that shit too and then there's a yeah. camaraderie and go okay i'm not i'm not weird or, or overly scared because actually some intelligent people have the same fears we have the same and i think yeah. we need to know that we know that we're not alone in experiencing the, yeah. the the trauma leaving nine to five, you know, uh, and that you're not crazy for trying to want a different life, even though you may not know what that looks like. Um, other exactly. people want the same thing. So, so, you know, that camaraderie, I think is so important. Now, how can people find you, Heather, right now, if they want to connect with you and sort of learn more about what you do? Yes. Um, well, my new Facebook page is still in process, so I'll give you my private Facebook. You can just find me at Heather Pollock on Facebook or my LinkedIn, and I'll put the link on in the chat box so you can connect with me there and send me a message if you like. Excellent. Uh, Sheila, last but not least, uh, what was the one thing you took out of the retreat and how can people find you uh, to say hello? Right. Um, so I came to retreat with some sort of a very basic idea of what I wanted to do, you know, but it, it was still not all there. So I think it was just very magical to come there all put on paper, you know, in just seven days. Um, I, I never even foresaw that happening, you know. Yeah, you know, I was going to talk about my other one, you know, the famous supper club, <laughs> which is going to get done, I'm sure, one day. But, you know, it, it, just, it was just something. You know, and I found out, I mean, apart from the amazing tribe and, you know, of course, you know, getting so many people who are good on social media, which I've not made use of um, and abused them yet. But I tried getting everybody's ideas out and contributing. That gave me, I still remember, you know, when Amy talked about hers, when Heather, you know, talked about hers and in you know, each just everybody talking about the ideas, I just was such a high. And I think that that high helped me get to where I wanted to I found that out about myself. I, I knew that long ago, but this was just completely very intimate, you know. So I learned that that high got me to where I wanted to be for myself because I always never did anything for myself. I loved helping other people out. But it was great that I had that accountability to get things on for myself. So, yeah, that's my, actually, that's my take um, from the retreat. And how can people connect with you as well if they wanted to learn more about what you're doing, support you in your cause? Uh, do you have a LinkedIn or something like that, Sheila? Yes. Um, so I'm still on LinkedIn uh, there. I will give my LinkedIn uh, in bit. Um, and as you know, it's work on progress for the website, you know, as I've just revisited this whole thing, but we're working towards, you know, we need something up because people have been asking and I need to get something up. So they can still find me on LinkedIn. Um, and, um, you know, we, we need to find that middle ground as to how we, 
you know, uh, still use social media for our day jobs and also to use social media for chess as we build them. So I think I'm still in fine tuning that and I would love to have conversation with people who are still, you know, in that capacity. It also sounds like you need Heather's help. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should go yeah. any title, Heather. If you want your clients. If you want a title is I'm your get shit done uh, collaborator. You know, like that is really what you're doing. You know, it's like have, they have, and that's the thing with visionaries, isn't it? We have all these awesome ideas, but most of us don't have the yeah. detailedness of a character to actually put it into a system put it into a day-to-day -day task. I think lots of people need you, Heather. Uh, so maybe actually, maybe another <laughs> webinar, we should actually get Heather on board and going, how do I organize my shit so that it's not all over the place and I can actually do what I do best in my business? Uh, so, but, it, but you know, she, uh, Sheila sounds like someone that actually needs that right now, which is awesome. Uh, thank you, ladies, for spending time with us. Uh, for you guys listening th on the replay or on the live call, as uh, or live stream, um, you can book a strategy chat with me. I'm going to give you the uh, straight link for my calendar uh, to learn more about the retreat, but also get my advice about your particular circumstance. I do a lot. Most people spend about an hour on a call with me. Everybody here spent an hour on a call with me before you came to the retreat, because I do truly want to make sure that you know what you need to, to understand more about your circumstance, not be thinking about something you should not be working on or, or, or spending time on when actually where you're at has much more, um, um, you know, intelligent and smart ways to do it uh, more easily. And focus does look good on you, not doing 100 things and getting overwhelmed in the first place. So whether or not you come to the retreat, if you book this call, you'll get my strategic advice about what your moves should be for your next round. Uh, and if the retreat is an experience that's going to help you get there, expedite your way to get there and develop a plan for your business and your life transition, uh, I would love to have you. So um, click on the link on the chat box or uh, just on the green button uh, underneath this video. Um, thank you everyone for coming here and uh, joining us. Uh, all these real stories are awesome. Again, go in the chat box and let us know what you want us to talk about in other webinars. What sorts of people you want us to invite in these webinars? What topics are your burning questions that you would love for us to develop a training, a webinar training, or a chat show like this about, um, which is always awesome when we can have more minds um, giving some insights uh, for everything. Um, Heather, Amy, Sheila, I always appreciate your time. I appreciate your stories and your, your uh, honesty around your journey. And I hope everyone here enjoyed uh, what we shared here today as well. Um, thank you very much and your support as well all the time with the movement of Screw the Cubicle. And I'm so glad to be part of your journeys as well. Have a great day, night, wherever you are, ladies. Bye. 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 Bye.